Today on The Real. He had a voice, and because of him, we are here today. The Real celebrates Martin Luther King Jr. with his daughter, Bernice King. Every generation has to make that contribution to the freedom struggle. Plus, guest host, political commentator, Angela Rye. We have to remember that the fight must go on. And on Girl Chat, the boomerang boyfriend. When you get a TV show, they slide up in them videos. No. They slide up. The Real. for the day. She's an attorney, a political commentator for CNN, and an overall boss. It's Angela Rye. Hello. Welcome to the show, Angela. Thank you. I'm How are you? Here. So happy to be here. I'm good. Awesome. Well, you know, Angela, we are happy that you are here because it's a very special day. Yes, Today it is. Today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. <laughs> this is the day we and celebrate the legacy of Dr. King. The work of Dr. King has impacted many, many people. Yes. Just about every one of us, yeah, you know. So, Angela, us. what would you say, or how would you say Dr. King's work has influenced you? I think in so many ways. I grew up in the house with a father who's a community activist, and the things that I remember being a small child is my dad fighting to ensure that there was a national holiday, fighting for the street name wow. change. Today, he is marching and part of the Martin Luther King Committee at home. So, yeah. That's so cool. Well, later on in the show, we'll be discussing more about Dr. King. We'll also be joined by his youngest daughter, Bernice King. How cool is that? Who will reflect on her father's life and legacy. I cannot wait to meet her. Me too. Yeah. Gosh. Up next, President-elect Donald Trump recently held his first press conference since the election, and things got heated, y'all. Mm -hmm. After being asked a question by CNN reporter Jim Acosta about a tweet Trump sent out asking, are we living in Nazi Germany? <laughs> Angela, you happen to work for CNN. What do you take of this comment regarding CNN being fake news? So I think that Donald Trump's entire Twitter account is fake news. Um, <laughs> I don't think that uh, we should take uh, his words too seriously. We should take them with a grain of salt. Um, he has bullied reporters throughout. We've seen him bully people from the moment he slid down that escalator. I shouldn't say slid down because he glided down. He didn't fall, although, anyway. But um, <laughs> I just think we've seen him do this kind of throughout, and there's no surprises here. Donald mm -hmm. Trump does not like news where it is bad for him, right? If anything is fake, if he doesn't like it. Right, right. Well, you know, it was like, I thought that news conference was um, an SNL sketch because yes. it was like he was yelling <laughs> and screaming at everybody. I'm like, calm down. And this, is this is what, is this what we're going to expect yeah. from him? It right. doesn't sound presidential at all. No. Not right. Well, he's creating a new standard. He's creating a new standard, and to your point, Lonnie, I think we're having a harder time trying to determine who's Donald Trump and who's Alec Baldwin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Oh, to your yeah. point, I think it's, it's a great one. It is, he is a, a running joke, and he doesn't know the joke is on him. So it's, and now on us, Woo! frankly, because yeah. some of y'all voted for him, I didn't. Uh, so that's y'all's president, it's not my president. Are you going to the it. inauguration? I have to go to the inauguration um, to do coverage, but if I had my way, maybe I'd be like in Ghana or somewhere else, not here. <laughs> you know what? I was invited to go to the inauguration, and I told the person, I said, I got a hair appointment that day. I can't go. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's going to take all day. It's going to take all day. day. 
happens. <laughs> like when I saw Snoop's reaction on Instagram, kind of calling out anybody who happens to plan on performing at the inauguration. Oh yeah, that's real, man. I like mean, yeah, you... it is gonna be kind of like. I'm, I'm sorry. It's the Mormon tab Tabernacle Choir and the Rockheads. Who want to go to that? I mean, come on. This it's I, like church. I saw the, the Rockheads when I was in New York for Christmas, but I don't want to see them at an inauguration. Yeah, you know, kicking their legs up. Yeah, it's just random. <laughs> it's like, he can't so get nobody. So there isn't anybody else that is performing? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got the girl from America's Got Talent. She's going to perform. Oh, um, she was sees a six or runner-up six or something. Oh, anyway. Lonnie. Lonnie is coating this thing with shade. Oh, no. oh, this is going to be an interesting time. But what can you say? Mm -hmm. I, I want to change this, this whole conversation. Mm -hmm to give people hope. In your opinion, what can people do to have hope? You know, I can't help but to think about the last eight years. Um, the President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama have just been amazing. Um, and to see the speech last week, yeah, to see the speech last week and know what he was imploring us to do, and that is change doesn't happen just because of him, because of their, them being residents of the White House. Change is within all of us. Hope yes. is within all of us. And on this day especially, we have to remember that the fight must go on. Yeah. We got to keep true. going. We have to fight for what we believe in. Whether you're a Trump supporter or, you know, a Clinton supporter or a Bernie supporter or whomever else, we have to remember that there are ideals that we hold fast to in this country. We have to push towards progress. Yes, and the more we separate, we're not hitting that progress right. the way Dr. Martin Luther King would have wanted. Yeah, he wanted us all to get together and unite for yeah. sure. Keep hope alive. Well, yes. you know what? Up next, Angela, have you ever heard of a boomerang boyfriend? Anybody? Uh. You know what a boomerang boyfriend is. It's the guy that you dated several years ago, a long time ago, and they reach out back to you through social media in hopes of getting it right this time. I was wrong. Wait. I'm going to get it right now. Wait. Okay. Right? Uh, it sounds like Lonnie had somebody in her DMs. Woo, they be sliding up. When you get a TV show, they slide up in them DMs. Yo. They slide up. That's what they do. When all of a sudden they see you being successful, you look good. Oh, uh, well, they see what they're missing. Exactly. According to Madame Noir, when dealing with guys <laughs> like this, you need to be cautious when considering going back with the old flame. Yeah. Okay? Like, I think I'm a boomerang girlfriend. I'm a, really? There's one guy, one guy, when I was in college, that I wish I could find. I don't remember his real name. Oh, okay? oh my God. But, oh. No, because it was, you know how long ago I was in college? That was, was 25, was it, was 30 it years ago. Was it? His, his nickname, and if you out there, you know who I'm talking to, his name is <laughs> Moose. Oh. <laughs> Not Wait. Moose. <laughs> why was his no. nickname Moose? I Girl, know. you don't want to know why. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. My gosh. I'm my trying to oh. picture what part of the moose is sexy. <laughs> yeah. He oh, was sexy, did you... but I did him wrong. I did what? Oh. What? No, I really want to know why his nickname is Moose. Me too. <laughs> is it because you, you, well, you held on you to You held the on to the ears? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is crazy. Anywho, go ahead with your story, Lonnie, please. But I did, I did do him wrong. I okay. do remember that, and he was a very good boyfriend for me, and I should have... I just want to apologize to him, so I'll... You know, if you want to slide up in my DM, Aww. Moose, you slide up, okay? She <laughs> will accept. I will not accept. decline the DM. Yeah. No, it, this is a... I, I think every young woman, at least I did, experience that decision, whether or not you're going to be that girl to accept the boomerang relationship. Mm -hmm. You break up with the guy, and then you get back together again. You break up, you get back together again. For me, it doesn't work because no matter how uncomfortable it is to be apart from that person, how you feel so used to sleeping with somebody in your bed and all those other things and the reasons why you get back together, old habits die hard, man. Yes. And that reason why you guys broke up in the first place probably didn't change in that short time that you guys decided to get back together. I don't know. Yeah, I think it depends. Because even you... No, my... I married my boomerang. What? But you took oh. Yes. But you took I did. Apart. Adam and I, we, we broke up for about a year. Right. And we kind of boomeranged each other. And for us, we both actually needed to grow up. Right. For me, I had only dated somebody for two months. That was the longest I ever dated somebody before I met Adam. So I knew he was the one when I first went out with him, but it scared me. So I knew I had, I had to grow up in that area. And for Adam, I was like, uh, hello, am I gonna get a ring? So Adam needed to know what it felt like to live without me. Yeah. And then he needed to grow up and realize, you know, dude, 
you gotta, you gotta commit. Right. Yeah. And that's right. what I mean. I think a significant amount of time should go by. Yes, when, for us when, it was a year. A right. year is a good amount, yeah. a long time. I think yeah. so too. So and, the, only, what about the only thing that I, I can't help but to say, I've had boomerang relationships and more than one, but I think that the issue is sometimes guys like the thrill of the chase. Yes. And oh. once they get you, then they stop trying. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's an important thing for us to know. Like, we need to know our worth. We need to know when we need a year apart or you need to, like, you need to be in time out for a second. Like, more than kids, you need to be in time out. I needed to. Um, so I think that's an important mm -hmm. point, too. But I think it just, it depends on I think it depends. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because yeah. they'll make all the changes. And once they got you back, they go right back they to the same gone. person yeah. that they were. And it depends yeah. on, I think, also why you the broke reason. up, too. Right. Yes. Yeah. The reason. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes exactly. it's just not I'll worth it. I'll be breaking sometimes. up because they broke, you know. Oh. 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 But if you got money now, I, you know, I'll bring You'll my brain back. Money. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, she's money. being honest. Speaking of sexy men, <laughs> last week TMZ posted a video of actor Ben Affleck at LAX being patted down by a TSA agent for a full minute. The video shows the agent checking each of Affleck's pockets several times and sliding his hands up and down the actor's back, chest, and legs. Some people are claiming that the TSA officer went overboard, while others defended the agent, saying that Affleck should get no special treatment. So, Angela, mm -hmm. what do you think? Well, um, some folks here may know I had a really upsetting experience with the TSA recently, and I hate to, I don't want to demonize the TSOs, the officers. Yeah. Um, but the process is broken, and it's time for us to fix it. I have received so many emails and um, messages on Twitter of people telling me these horrible experiences from a woman who had cancer, cancer. and was made to take off her wig to women who've had their full waistband. Like, again, like you see Ben Affleck going through that in the video, mm -hmm. but people going Put into their hands their, in there. Yes. And those are the types of stories that I'm getting. So for me, I just think there's something wrong with the process. It's time to update the technology. We spend millions of dollars in this country on technology. Those are, taxpay those are taxpayers' dollars. It's time for us to fix the technology. Just put something in that works. We're not saying let anybody on the plane and anything oh, goes, no. but we're saying just tighten up the process. Yeah, every time I go through TSA, they check this weave. Woo! I'm like, look, be careful. It's my weave, okay? <laughs> Does it bother you? Careful. No, it doesn't bother me because I, I expect like, it now. like, check me how you want. I'm like, figure yeah. it out. Just because I actually feel more safe, safe when I knowing that I've job. really been thoroughly checked. Yeah. But here's the problem. So there was, a, there was covert testing done on TSA in 2015. 95% mm -hmm. failure rate. That means that they weren't finding the plastic weapons that mm -hmm. people were getting through. So while they're filling us up, they're missing the key clues. So I don't feel safer because you groped me. Right. You know, I think the issue is you need to really, you need to know what you're looking for. That's a that's a huge problem. Because most of the time I know how to dress when I go through TSA. Right. I don't I don't even wear a bra no more when I go through there. <laughs> no, because if I wear a bra, it's gonna go off. I wear a wire bra. You know, and then here oh. they come. Yeah, they do. <laughs> stuff. So right. I don't even wear. I just go free. You know, and just wear all cotton. And yeah. um, I try to wear no medals. I mean, you know, that's for me. So I could just, you know, I try to help them out. But you're right about, we just got to improve the system. The ones that get through, obviously, right. that well, have things, that is upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. I would like my TSA officers to take their jobs seriously. Yeah. However, I think there needs to be a fine line between being too aggressive and safe. Mm -hmm. So kind of like what you were saying, mm -hmm. I think we need to find a better, yeah. a better system. Maybe just, you know, train them so they actually know what, about what they're truly looking for. though? I mean, the machines I'm, but we are, have that thing. Wrong. That, that thing. machine is wrong. Like, that's the one. There were yellow boxes over the top of my crotch area, and I was like, you're not bad me. That was what set it off because I got selected for random screening. What did did they actually being? touch? Because they're supposed to go inside. I had on underwear inside. and a dress. And, like, to your point, like, the least amount of clothes, it was a DVF wrap dress. Like, what am I hiding in a DVF wrap dress? You could hide a lot of things in a wrap dress that isn't shaped to your body. Unless you're walking through with, like, a cat suit, like, something skimming every part of your body, you can always hide something. But I'm not You actual. could potentially, but all I was hiding in there was my vagina. So right. that was it. <laughs> like, yeah. That was it. Sorry, I just... But I, question for you. Yeah, question Nothing for you. Nothing else hiding. Just question for you. When they patted you down, because mm -hmm. I know when I go through, they kind of like back of the hand. spread yeah, the legs. Yeah, yeah, back of the hand. You have to spread the legs. It spreads your legs, and then they go, you know, in between, up, up in between your inner, inner thighs. thighs. Did they, they touch did. you there? They went all the way up 
to like the to the they call it the point of resistance up my crotch, right up through the middle, not the thigh area. Did you have right a choice to you have a male or a female? Yeah, no, it was a female. Sometimes you do. It was a okay. female, but I also asked not to be patted. I asked, I begged them to just let me go back through the backscatter machine. Yeah, they always give. They you wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me go back. That's strange. All of it was strange. Yes. Yeah. All of it was strange. Yeah. That's yeah. the video. You can't see them going all the way up, but you see me jump when she does it. So. I just, oh, it, wow. you guys, more than Rip. anything, it really saddens me that just 15 years ago, I used to be able to have my boyfriend walk yeah. me all the way to the gate yeah, you could. to drop me off from my flights. What's going to happen 10, 15 years from now? <laughs> now? We all remember you, school and fellow CNN commentator Corey Lewandowski, this past election season, when you quoted Beyonce scripture to him saying, <laughs> boy, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we figured, since you're here, we wanted to get your opinion on some men who have been making headlines lately. It's a game we decided to call, boy, bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Here's how it works. We're going to show you the guy explaining what he did, and you have to tell us, boy, bye, if you don't approve, or hey, boy, hey, if you <laughs> do. Cool? Yes. All right, so Let's I see it. you have your paddle. You ready to go? I'm ready. Perfect. Okay, first up, after the Golden Globes, funny man Marlon Wayans posted a picture of his friend Cuba Gooding Jr. partying with a bucket of KFC chicken on his head. <laughs> Good old Cuba. Okay, Angela. Cuba Gooding Jr. in a chicken bucket. Are we hey boy hey or boy bye? I think we could probably unanimously say that is a boy bye. Yes. <laughs> you, do not, you do not do the fried chicken song and dance, Cuba, and you definitely don't put a bucket on your head. Exactly. The only one. I don't know. You okay? I so That's boy bye. That's an endorsement bye. deal they probably don't even want. <laughs> okay. 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 That's not it. Okay, I have a good one though. Chris Brown is reportedly going to box fellow rapper Soldier Boy at a pay-per-view event in what? March. Now, this was announced after Soldier Boy real? posted it's emojis yeah. on Chris's ex, oh Karuchi's Instagram page. So, Chris Brown and Soldier Boy in the ring. Hey, boy, hey, or boy, bye. Oh I didn't even, they didn't even let boy, me in that. You. But amen, church. It is <laughs> absolutely boy, bye. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I don't support the fight because it sounds like an accident waiting to happen. I need Chris, oh, Chris Brown to keep dancing, Soulja Boy. I don't know if he's still what? rapping. If he is, maybe he could release. That's what he um, needs to do, write some rap yeah, instead of that. trying to box people. But why are you doing this, though? Y'all know why? Not, I can't even feed it more. Because okay. of what happened with Karuchi and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's oh, complicated. Okay. I'll tell you later. Okay. okay. Last but not least, <laughs> it is being reported that Drake is totally falling oh. for my girl, Jennifer Lopez, who wouldn't. So, uh, who just happened to be his childhood crush. However, some people are concerned that she may just be having fun with him. Well, Drake <laughs> waiting for tonight with J-Lo. Is that a, <laughs> hey boy, hey, or is that a, boy, bye? So we know what he's hoping for, but boy, boy, Drake needs to go cry on a track. Like yes. he's not, he's not, he's not gonna pull J Lo. Oh, I don't know. No, I oh, gotta pull J Lo. Oh, he was just, you guys, he was just about. Didn't it seem like he was gonna propose to Rihanna on the VMA? You think that was I true. Come think on, that. so he stays falling in love. Let Drake catch up with his feelings. I think he oh, needs yeah. a minute. <laughs> It's an absolute honor to introduce our next guest on this historic day, coming to us live from Fox 5 in Atlanta, the daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Bernice King. Woo! Oh, we're so excited to have you, Dr. King. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited to be here. Oh, great. So, um, and you look beautiful. Now, we know in many ways America seems as divided now more than it's ever been. What do you think your father, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., would make of America now? Well, you know, because I believe my father was a, a prophet, I think he, he kind of foresaw where we are today because uh, he tried to forewarn us of the things that we needed to do, the adjustments we needed to make as a nation. He, he challenged us to deal with the last vestiges of, of racism um, and also to make a serious uh, adjustment in terms of our value system that we should put people first instead of profit. Um, and so I think he would still, though, have an abiding faith in the future. He was a very optimistic man. Um, and he would be obviously praying and acting and helping us to really uh, move toward looking at the root causes of many of our issues in this society. And, and some of the divisiveness, he has a wonderful quote. He says, 
that I'm convinced that men hate each other because they fear each other, and they fear each other because they don't know each other, and they don't know each other because they do not communicate with each other, and they do not communicate with each other because they are separated from each other. Wow. wow. Some have called Black Lives Matter the new civil rights movement. Uh, is this movement like Dr. King's? You know, when people ask me that question, I, I, I think it's unfair to both movements, actually, because I think every generation has to define their cause. Um, and, and my mother used to say the struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. And so every generation has to make that contribution to the freedom struggle. And if anything uh, that I can say, I believe that Black Lives Matter has been successful in not letting this country kind of uh, brush underneath the rug the whole uh, tension between uh, communities and, and particularly as it relates to the, the disparities with uh, the black community and other marginalized communities. They have helped to dramatize some of these issues. So the idea at the end of the day is to really work towards this beloved community where we coexist with all of our differences, where everyone is respected and, and, and treated with dignity. I love that. So the King Center is having a live streaming event tonight. Can you tell us more about it and what you hope to accomplish? It, yes, it, it's a beloved community talks and, and let's bridge the racial divide from uh, urban, suburban to rural. Uh, the vision for this came out of really my heart's desire to see us go beyond some of the usual surface conversations that we have around race. Um, and typically in uh, audiences where people think alike. And so what we have done is created an opportunity for people who come from different ideological uh, 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 communities to come together on a stage together and, and be probed um, so that we have an opportunity to better understand each other. I always say to people, we must first seek to understand than to be understood. Um, sometimes we draw certain conclusions uh, without really knowing. Uh, and so this is going to be one of those real deep uh, conversations. So it's our hope that we can just, on Dr. King's uh, birthday, uh, set a, a tone um, for this nation uh, to start looking at having these courageous conversations, crossing over, um, and really getting to understand people who are very different from you um, so that we can create a better uh, America and truly make America great again. All right, well, Dr. Bernice King, thank you so much for sharing with us. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a day in which we remember and honor his life, his legacy, and his fight for peace, justice, and equality for all. Yes. And while we still strive for these goals, sometimes talking about them can be difficult and putting them into action can be even harder. A group in Oakland called the Radical Monarchs have stepped up to the challenge by proving that you're never too young to make a radical change. Take a look. In 2014, Ana Yvette Martinez and Marilyn Hollenquest started the Radical Monarchs as a space for young girls of color to celebrate their identities, form bonds of sisterhood, and contribute to their communities. The Monarch Troop members earn badges that reflect the issues they support, like the Radical Pride Badge, the Black Lives Matter Badge, and the Radical Bodies Badge. Wearing berets that channel the spirit of past movements, these young women engage with the community at city council meetings, public events on the streets, and by marching. With their poise and passion, it's clear these monarchs are already making the world a more radical place. Please welcome the founders of the Radical Monarchs, Marilyn and Ana Yvette, and three of the Radical Monarchs, Amia, Dayani, and Lupita.
ask you, why was it so important to teach your daughter about social justice? Yes, so her dad and I actually met um, as student organizers. Mm -hmm. And so when we began our family, mm -hmm. for us it was really clear that we wanted to have social justice be one of our main family values. So she's been attending marches since before she could even walk. Oh wow. Oh, gosh, that's amazing. That's great. Amazing. Now, Diani and Lupita, I have a question. Um, what excited you guys about Radical Monarchs when you first heard about it? I got to like be with girls of color and we got to build friendships together and do social justice as friends. Oh, out of sight. What excited me about the Radical Monarchs when I heard about it was being able to get to know girls of color um, and being able to learn about social justice issues and make the world a better place. So, Marilyn, um, since starting the Monarchs, what has it been like watching the girls in the organization grow? Yes, I've been so blessed just to be a witness to, to their brilliance. What Dr. King was mentioning earlier about each generation having to fight for those yeah. rights, being a part of that, two words in particular, inspiration and hope, mm -hmm. when a time where hope may seem lost, yeah. working with the girls for me is my daily medicine. Mm -hmm. It keeps me hopeful and it keeps me in the mood. You ladies get badges after you participate in certain movements, correct? Yes. What have been some of your favorite badges? The Radical Beauty Badge. Uh-huh. Uh, because we're learning to love ourselves and not want to change who we are. Also, I love, I love that. that. That's yeah. really good. <laughs> not caring what other people think about you because it's your body. Amen. That's right, girl. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's so good. The um, badges are so cool. Yeah. Thank What's your you. favorite badge? Um, my favorite one is the Radical Pride badge. We got to learn about the gender spectrum and we participated in the Trans March in San Francisco. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. I would say my favorite badge would be Pachamama Justice. I like this because I'm a big nature person mm -hmm. and whenever I'm in nature, I feel relaxed mm -hmm. and it's just really fun. Oh, that wow. That's really cool. cool. And you know, since today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, does Dr. King's activism play a role in how you want the radical monarchs to impact your community? Uh, the radical monarchs in um, MLK, <laughs> Mm -hmm. are very connected because we both want the best for um, our colored community mm -hmm. and we're fighting for justice. We're definitely following um, in his footsteps and in the legacies of all of our ancestors and elders who have done this work for a very long time. Yes. <laughs> all right, well, we'd love to see you ladies in action. Do you have like a group chant or cheer you can do for us today? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Ooh, let's see it. it. Oh, I want to see it. We are the monarchs and we're here to say We love social justice in a major way I said a boom, chicka boom I said a boom, chicka boom I said a boom, chicka rocka, chicka rocka, chicka boom We've all heard the saying, teamwork makes the dream work. Well, we paired up Lonnie and Adrian with two contestants from our lovely audience for a trivia square off that will make someone $500 richer. Time to play the real squared. <laughs> All right, let's meet our players. Angela? On team one, we have Adrian and Aaron Anthony. Aaron, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from sunny San Diego, California. San Deezy. San <laughs> And on team two, we have Lonnie and Cheryl Gillen. Where are you from, Cheryl? I'm a United States Marine from <gasps> Alabama. Thank you for hey! your service. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Sam, tell everybody how to play. All right, teams, here are the rules. Backstage, we separated you and asked you a few trivia questions. Since we are celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today, the questions are all about him. Now, you all have your answers on cards, and when asked, you'll hold them up. If you and your teammate both get the answer right, you get a point. If only one of you gets it right, or you both get it wrong, no points. The first team to two points will win the game and $500 in cash. Okay. Good luck, teams. Let's do this. Here's the first question. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in what city? 
All right, Adrian and Aaron, let's see your answers. All right, you are right. The answer is Atlanta. That is one point for you. Lonnie and Cheryl, let's see your answers. Ooh. Oh, sorry, you guys. Lonnie, you said Montgomery. <laughs> what? And Cheryl, you said Atlanta. No point for you guys on this one. I'm sorry. Okay, teams, the score is 1-0. Tell oh. them their next question, Angela. All right, We're getting teams. competitive over there. All right, I see, I see. Teams, your question is, how old was Martin Luther King Jr. when he died? Lonnie and Cheryl, let's see your answers. Yeah. You're both right. Great work. That's one point for you, but if Adrian's team gets this right, they're the winners. So Adrian and Aaron, let's see your answers. I hope you got this right. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, you're right. The first team to reach two points. And with the final score of two to one, Adrian and Aaron wins it. Congratulations, you guys. <laughs> Lonnie and Cheryl, you guys didn't win today. I'm yes, so we sorry. Did. But hey, <laughs> give the money over, Lonnie. But we can't let you go home empty-handed. You're going home with a priceless real T-shirt. <laughs> All right, and that.